All right, guys, we got Amir here from RS Future, and he is going to be designing and developing all of the, on you know, the front uh, splitter, the under tray, and the uh, rear diffuser for the car. So yeah, man, I'm stoked to be working on this thing. This thing's awesome. You and Dom are doing some killer work on it. So to be a part of it's really rad. I'm hoping to hopefully make something that's that's as nice as the rest of the work on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. All right, boys, it is strut tower brace time. So what we want to do is tie the two strut towers together right here. And AEM, this is our 3D printed mold. They left a little bit of uh, a section right there for us to do that. And we're going to use a one inch piece of carbon fiber tube that Dom is then going to insert and bond two pieces of titanium that will then uh, bolt to two tabs that will be on each strut tower. And that's how our strut tower brace is going to work. So we're gonna do, Dom's gonna do the majority of the work, but he's gonna wait till we have the finished AEM intake before we actually weld the tabs on to uh, get the exact replacement. Uh, Cause we don't wanna trust this with it kinda not being fully secured in here and just make sure that we uh, do it right the first time. So I'll show you guys the carbon tube. It looks pretty sick, but uh, yeah, this should, be, this should be pretty dope in the end. This is our one inch carbon fiber tube. It's an eighth inch thick and it is extremely rigid and strong, like ri ridiculous. This is like aerospace grade carbon fiber uh, with all those kind of certifications and whatnot. I'm not even sure what, what the certs are, but this is gonna be plenty strong for our strut tower bridge. Titanium is super hard to machine. Uh, we don't have all like the, the ball or tooling to really rip through it, so we gotta take our time. We just bought this nice little end mill, uh, five flute that can tear through some titanium, that Dom can uh, trim, trim the section of the round bar that we got. That is looking fresh. How much? Yeah, super light. And it it's looks so like freaking strong. It looks like a like a magician's wand. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it does. Oh yeah. Titanium carbon fiber strut tower brace. So that's gonna be our oil feed off the bottom of the tank. We're gonna run a soft line to connect to the hard line, and then run the hard line to a one-way valve or a ball valve and then run that around here, and then another soft line to pick up to the oil pickup, which you can see the red cap right there. This is lit. Alright, the first part of the oil feed line, which we're using a stainless steel hard line for, is finished. Dom's got the dash 12s welded on. She's using P clips to hold it on the chassis. And then we're gonna run a 90 off of the bottom of the oil tank. And uh, yeah, 90 here, 90 here. And then run a straight off of this all the way up to some maybe a 90 or maybe something. Um, you can find a specific fitting to help kind of run that down here. Put some heat management on here eventually. It'll be looking good, baby. So we're working on the intake uh, design now. We got some filters from AEM that we're gonna use, some carbon ones. Uh, not, so we're not gonna be able to design this the way we really wanted to, mainly because of uh, how the front end came together with the radiators and us not being able to run them forward. So we're kind of doing a plan B uh, which Dom has a really good idea for. So uh, we got some carbon intake pipes, carbon filters, um, some Wiggins clamps, and we're actually gonna bond some aluminum to from the filter to the carbon fiber with a nice Wiggins style clamp. And uh, then that will come, that'll kind of come down through the front end uh, to pick up the filters, which are gonna go, and we're not sure exactly where yet, but maybe this area here, maybe in here, uh, hopefully here, if we can cut back enough of the bumper to fit it, 
uh, and make sure there's enough room everywhere else. So that's kind of the game plan at the moment. Like maybe like a little bit down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty cool. Chat, one to go. There we go. That one's got a finish weld. And then uh, when we get the rest of our intake on, we'll run the tube up here, which you won't be able to see. It'll be mostly hidden behind the bumper, which would be awesome. Uh, maybe see just like a tiny bit of it hanging down and swing through here and then make a tight radius up into the carbon four inch pipe that'll go to the intake itself. Uh, obviously we're gonna be doing plumbing very soon. So uh, Index Motorsport is getting us all dialed with the fittings we need and then we'll send everything, you know, get everything measured up and kind of dialed in and then send everything back to them for them to crimp and make all the lines. What's up guys? All right, it's time to mount our handbrake and pretty cool story. I got this carbon fiber handbrake from a gentleman in Russia. His name is Yuri uh, Anton Enko. He has a website where he only makes carbon fiber parts for basically Subaru GC8s. So he actually gets a lot of the uh, real parts from ProDrive from the rally days, uh, WRC days. So he'll, he will actually make a mold from the real part from ProDrive and then make his parts off of those molds that he pulled from the real parts. So he was essentially remaking all of the uh, ProDrive parts out of carbon fiber uh, from the actual WRC car. And this is the handbrake from uh, one of those molds. And the coolest part of the story is he literally stayed out for 48 hours straight making this for me so that he could give it to his friend who was flying to LA to get it to me super fast so that Dom and I could install it in the form of the Supra in time before we tear this thing down for sandblasting. Uh, pretty rad story and it's here. It came out awesome, super stoked on it. Uh, Dom has already started kind of getting uh, the location of this thing mounted up and we should have it done by tonight. Page is nothing but awesome parts for GC8s that he made and wheels, boom. Base plate is tacked in. Just gotta mark some holes, drill them. Finish weld, bolt on. Installed, baby. Carbon fiber, WRC spec, handbrake is in, baby. So we just gotta get a master cylinder that connects to here, and we're good. And then hook it all up when we start doing plumbing here soon. Um, yeah, dude, it's coming together, baby. All right, we're gonna have our kill switch right here. And where's that pin at? Demonstrate. All right, now pull it. Boom, car's off. Yeah, like a grenade. So this is our full on safety thing for me. So I can just freaking yank this thing just in case of some catastrophic deal. Uh, and, the, and the car does not want to shut off. I can shut this thing off manually 
and that's obviously for emergency use only. We're gonna, John Reed's gonna set up all the safety parameters like a uh, low oil pressure or kind of tone itself down or maybe hit like a, um, a low rev limiter if it gets too hot. And then the start button right here so I can fire it up while I'm fully strapped in. Yeah, it's looking sick. All right guys, we just got the chassis back from sandblasting. Throw me that bar. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. We are in full chassis paint prep mode. Yeah, so we used a gray scotch red pad to just kind of rough everything up and then just kind of dust it on. Uh, some etching primer onto all the bare spots. The sandblaster did not get every single area of it, so we are gonna have we are having to go through it and reprep some surfaces. This side is just dusted a little bit. Still got most of the interior to do, the underside, the driver's side. Rear hoop, the front floor, transmission tunnel, and then we'll be fully primered and prepped for most of the car. Uh, the boys are just filling a couple body spots from the spot weld drilling that we had to do. Be uh, working through the night tonight on this for sure. We're just going through and making our necessary uh, cleanups and making sure the thing doesn't rust before we actually get to lay some paint on it. That's so why we're kind of putting a little bit of dust of primer all over the chassis and uh, making sure there's no handprints on it because I made that mistake. It's gonna almost rust immediately. Uh, I think he said you welded it. No, nope, I welded the other side, dude. Oh yeah, that's the worst side. <laughs> <laughs> Firewall, baby. So the boys have been putting in a ton of work on this thing, Koozie and Dom, and basically just cleaned up and all the little, from you know, welding and plates and everything, the metal poles, and there's like dents and divots and stuff. So Dom really wanted to spend some time cleaning this thing up. And <laughs> uh, I didn't think it was gonna take this long, but it is looking really good, so pretty cool. We're just uh, wrapping it up with some seam sealer, putting some nice seam sealer lines in. All right, next up, it's gonna be paint, man. We're laying on the steel, baby. What's up guys, getting back into it now. Uh, we are in final assembly phase of the chassis after it being painted by Koozie. So there's a lot that's been done that I haven't shown. I think I'll start again from here on out. Uh, we didn't miss too much, but um, you know, we got a lot of the lines crimped from Index Motorsport. So uh, we're waiting on a few key items to come back parts wise. And uh, then we can throw the engine in the car, the drivetrain, and really get the majority of the parts back in the car. So right now, uh, Dom and I have just been kind of picking away at little things here and there to uh, get back on the chassis. And I'll walk you guys through it right now. So obviously we got the radium. Radium engineering fuel cell back in there. Um, we got this Cerakota with a heat dissipating Cerakote. This is the power steering reservoir. It just looks really cool. So we doing, did that. Got the oil tank back in, steering column, handbrakes in there, pedal box, uh, brake lines are all back in and run. Uh, Aldo from Steph Papadakis had this laser cut and then Dom put a piece of titanium underneath it and then fired it so it looks all different colors, which is dope. Uh, we got some good hardware right here. We got the radium engineering FPR in. Kind of just, you know, been putting all the studs, bolts, hardware, kind of piecing all the little things together, but um, it's looking super clean, super dope. And we're waiting on a lot to really get done. So um, just waiting on some pieces to come back from Anodize to finish this, but Dom has the lines 
all done really dope. And this is gonna be, a, this is a pass through system for the rear brakes as the brake handle. And then this is the anodized we're going with. So big ups to Genco plating out here in Southern California. Did a phenomenal job on all of the anodizing. And I'll come over to the engine right now. We got all the little pieces of aluminum anodized. The motor plate back here, all anodized. It's kind of gonna be our theme throughout the course of this entire build as uh, black and gold as the Brown and Miller hose that we're gonna be running has uh, gold crimp collars on the black, uh, the matte black hard anodized uh, fittings. So it's all gonna kind of match pretty well. And we have it throughout, we got the subframe in. So we got the 8.8 rear in alternator, fuel lines, power steering pump, anti-gravity batteries in. So we're looking good, boys. Things are things are coming together. And then this is the radiator support, as you can see. So really stoked how this all came out. We powder coated this upper rad support. This is where we're running our AEM carbon fiber intakes. So we do have a new product sponsor that came on board and it is Pro Bolt. So big thanks to those guys. They have amazing titanium, aluminum, stainless steel hardware for pretty much everything you need. Massive thank you to Pro Bolt for coming on board. We're gonna use a lot of this as kind of dress up hardware for a lot of the parts that we're using. All right, that is your update for now. Uh, we're gonna get into some livery design and and then continue on just putting parts on the car so let's do it so and then it's it kind of well it stretches into the bumper from here yeah it goes kind of yeah you know. yes we want to extend it all the way down here and make them small but i think they get big to a point and then they just stay big they don't go any bigger Continue the gold theme. We even got gold axles from Drive Shaft Shop. All right, big progress, boys. We got the Wise Fab back on, Brembo calipers and rotors back on. We got the Drive Shaft Shop axles back on in gold. Uh, just waiting on a couple pieces back from anodizing so that we can put the shocks back in. Brian from Genco Plating actually sent out the sway bar, not the end links, but yeah, basically the end links. Sent them out to get polished before anodizing so that they came out super legit and nice. Um, so he wanted to go, he wanted to do that himself. And, and then uh, there's a few other pieces that he still has that he's uh, getting sorted out in the, in the nice gold anodize. It's nice putting everything back together, like just legit, so freaking clean. Like that's the cleanest it'll ever be and uh, just seeing it all come together piece by piece in the color that we all, this, you know, the color that we wanted and looking sick, man, freaking stoked. All right, we out here at an undisclosed location, scouting with Andy from Race Service and uh, we're checking out the, this road for the Formula Supra. We're gonna go fast. We're gonna, we're gonna go real fast. We're gonna go fast, we're gonna hit some twisties we're gonna do some drifting, we're gonna do some high speed, and uh, try to showcase what this car was built for, or what my thought was <laughs> for this car to be built, and uh, utilize kind of both those tools as far as grip and drift, and uh, have some fun out here. We are currently at the cars and final assembly stage. I have not tested the car or driven it at all, so uh, we're scouting early. And uh, I'm just kind of hoping that everything works out and that the car is drivable in the way that I'm expecting as far as drifting is concerned and the power band is going to be snappy but not, uh, hopefully not snappy to the point where it's uh, extremely difficult. So um, we're just going to try to check out some high speed stuff, some low speed stuff and uh, just make sure that the roads are, the asphalt's good, turns are wide enough and uh, see what happens. So I'll show you guys a bit more when we get up into this 17 mile stretch of sick roads. Check out the views though. California, baby. Really nice two set uphill behind us. So 
so we'd probably run this the opposite direction. We're coming downhill right now. This section coming up looks dope. Really wide. Scary over there. But plenty of room. Look at it. Sick. Not going to show you guys all the crazy switchbacks. We got to leave a little bit of room on the table for surprises. There you go. <laughs> but uh, this road has basically everything we're looking for as far as speed, uh, multiple switchback spots, some awesome follow stuff, some awesome chase stuff, some drone stuff, uh, some long blend stuff, everything. Some cool elevation, like this, this is a dope road, so. This long straight right here. Probably be an uphill. Hauling ass. Just think of them sounds now echoing through this valley. It's gonna be dope.